very good afternoon to you and thanks for joining us the way you always do at this time on television, independent television. My name is Evan Sunokogie. You're welcome to the program Africa Discuss. Well, today we are going to be looking at what is going on in Niger, Republic of Niger, only about some few days ago that uh, the whole world was taken aback. Uh, talking about uh, the coup d'etat in uh, Niger. Some people say it's a part of what has been uh, yeah, expected somehow because of uh, uh, the reported poverty level in, in Niger. Why some people say is the continuous extension of uh, the military incursions into the political space in Africa. You know, uh, about some fortnight <coughs> ago now, we came here and we talked about uh, what seems to be a new political realization now, talking about the way politi uh, pol uh, military men are making incursions into the political space in Africa. And of course, Niger is uh, the latest of it all. What we have, it was exactly on the 26th of uh, July that we have some armed guard uh, to the president taking over uh, the political space in Niger. And of course, we are told that uh, the uh, presidential aid uh, commander in the person of uh, Abdul Rahman and Chatni that, uh, you know, actually took over that, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that coup. And of course, as we speak now, he's the head of the military junta in uh, Niger. Well, to discuss all this uh, today, we are so privileged to have our two guests. We have Nowita Ibutako on set here with us. He's an international acclaimed uh, civil society activist and also uh, international conflict uh, resolution expert. We also have Dr. Uh, Pedro. Dr. Don Pedro is going to be joining us via Zoom, and uh, when we are ready, we'll let you see him so that uh, he also tells us what he has to say about uh, the Nigerian uh, civil, the Nigerian coup. All right, so, uh, Nowita Ibutako, you welcome to uh, this uh, program. It's a pleasure. Th thank you for inviting me. Okay. All right, so just as uh, we have said, what do you think is going on in Niger as it stands now? Well, uh, in Niger, there's a military coup. <laughs> Just as we have had uh, recently in Burkina Faso, in, uh, in Mali, in Guinea, uh, there seems to be a resurgence of coup d'etat in, in the Sahel region of Africa. When I say Sahel, those countries, you know, that are not too far from uh, Libya, mm. you know, Nigeria is inclusive, Senegal, and I name them. So there's a military coup, and uh, President Mohamed Bazoum had been overthrown. Oh. And uh, the military junta is saying that uh, they've come to power because of security issues, you know, and things like that. But for me, it's the security issues and uh, social economy issues. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, those are flimsy excuses. That's what I'm concerned. Looking at Niger, Niger have not had the opportunity to have a civilian government for many years. It was only in 2021 that, uh, uh, you know, a civilian government, you know, that had been there for about four years or eight years, left for the guy that had just been overthrown. Oh. So I would say the military have been very rest, uh, restive in, uh, in Niger. They've been very restive. Oh. Agreed. There are security issues. I agree that there are just economic issues. But... What I see in Niger is not enough for the native genre to, 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 you know, to overthrow Mohamed uh, Bazoum. It's not enough. Because uh, immediately Mohamed Madon won an election in 2021, precisely in March. A military guy, some military guys, they, they almost overthrown him. The man had not been stepped in. The man had not been sworn in. Mm. What that coup? You wanted to take place. But one thing led to the other, the coup did not succeed before Mohamed um, Bazon came on board. Now the man is barely two years in, in office, and the junta came on board. Just came on board and so I, I don't sympathize with them, to my opinion. Oh. I know Mohamed uh, Bazon has not been a fantastic president. When I say fantastic president, he has not been uh, you know, pro people, so to say. He, 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 he has not uh, displayed mission. He has not displayed vision to take the Nigerian to the next level. That's my opinion. But in as much, nevertheless, his shortcomings. What happened in Niger 
It's not enough for Amadou Abradahne, the so-called head of the junta, yeah. to take over uh, the, the reins of government. Mm. I see him and his group as ambitious lot. Mm. They're just ambitious. They, they, they want to take power. They want to test power. That's my opinion. Now, so uh, yeah, it, it's more worrisome when you get to know that uh, 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 Abdul Rahman uh, and Chani now it's, uh, was actually the head of uh, the yeah, military yeah, yeah. Uh, commander. Yeah, he was the head of the brigade of guards. Uh, brig brig brigade of guards yeah. with uh, the ousted uh, president. Elite. Now, let's look at it because uh, for some people, uh, perhaps he was really not uh, loyal to uh, his uh, his master. I mean. Let's say, for example, in, in uh, you know, somewhere like in Nigeria here now, uh, where you have the president as uh, commander-in-chief of the armed forces, and of course you have uh, the service chiefs loyal to, to him. So for uh, the Abdul Rahman, he was really not a lawyer. Quickly, let's quickly uh, say that now before we join John Pedro. It's very clear, because as I said, uh, they don't have any justification for the coupies to be, to be in presidential palace oh. in Niger, as far as I'm concerned. As I said, a moment Bazon had not display extraordinary leadership, but... Just like you have said, is, 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 these guys are ambitious. The guy who is supposed to be the head of the uh, elite uh, guard is the one that is the head of, uh, is the one that is leading the coup. Okay. So they are, they are not patriots. Okay. They are not messiahs. Mm. They are just they, they, they want to test power and see how sweet it is. Mm. That's my opinion. All right. Uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Don Pedro Obaseki, an international acclaimed uh, uh, pub publicist. You may want to say, and of course. Uh, a uh, public affairs analyst, a political analyst uh, too. So you welcome to the program African Discourse. Uh, thank you very much. No. Uh, I'm happy to be here with you guys. Okay. Well, uh, this is about the fifth time now that we are having military making incursion uh, into the political space in Niger. I mean, right from 1960, we had it the first time, the second time, the fourth time, and of course, uh, the fifth time. Now, what is really going on? Is it that the Nigerian uh, you know, presidential force is weak? Or what do you think is going on, Dr. Obaseki? Um, I think that just shows um, a total, uh, I would have put, uh, deconstruction of the democratic process in Africa. You see, um, many have been talking, I listen, I follow. And I keep asking, I've been to Niger, I've been to Maradi in some years past, I've been to Nime. And one thing I can tell you for free is that what is playing out in the public domain, particularly among the elite media, does not seem to take into consideration the plight of the people in Niger. I am an advocate for good governance, and I think I, I also was in the front line in those days uh, against the likes of Abacha, military rule, the best military dictatorship, the best military rule, the most benevolent dictatorship is still worse than the worst democracy. You know, because, um, however, you have to understand to a large extent why what happened in Niger Republic might have happened. Number one, I follow some of the uh, protests on the streets. There is no single protest so far on the streets of Niger for the reinstatement of Mohammed Bazoum. Not one, not one single one. It shows that there has been a calamitous failure mm. on the part of the political class in Niger. You know, there was even a viral video where one of the deputies of the parliament was being stoned on the streets. He was not even involved in the coup. He's not one of those who have been overthrown. But people went to his house and were petering him with stones. <laughs> now, for the military to behave, the civilians must be on top of their game. In Africa, we must understand that we are just like a race that missed the bus. We cannot continue like this, whether we like it or not. Nigeria is even lucky. We are a lucky lot because I don't see the military trying what have happened in the Niger Republic in our country. We've been able to entrench since 1999. Why is it even flawed for us to change for change of government? What is a coup? The coup necessarily does not have to be taken by, uh, by the military. A coup is just an 
illegal change of state, illegal change of the leadership of state, when non-state actors or um, uh, uh, military buccaneers come on, or even civilians. When a sitting president, for example, wants to change the constitution of the people to entrench himself in power, like many of the all of them have done, apart from maybe in Niger now, where you have Alpha Conde in Guinea changing the constitution, same thing in Senegal, same thing in Burkina Faso, same thing now as we are speaking last night in the Central African Democratic Republic, where there is a, a two-term tenure of five, five years, and they are doing a ref referendum last night to change it to three, four terms so that the president can remain in office. So these are things that have, have heated the political space. And that is what we are seeing playing out again in the Nigerian Republic. Okay, now, I think uh, yeah. that is some, it is the failure of civilian leadership that has given the room. There is a saying in Benin, say, if and, if who not the tree, and not go enter. No matter the supposed uh, bravado of of, of uh, the military uh, boys in, in, in Niger, the pride on the excuse given by the failure, like my friend in the studio just said, that Bazoum has not been a fantastic president. I want to say it clearly. He has not been a, good, a president at all. It was a, 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 a to say, it's just another example of what we faced in the Buhari years. And that is what we are seeing playing out today in the Nigeria Republic. Okay, now, uh, but I doc hope that the boys are made to go back to the barracks. Mm, uh, yeah, doctor, uh, we know that uh, there are updates now. We understand that uh, the ECOWAS has given an ultimatum. And uh, the fear now is that uh, there shouldn't be a show of force in, 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 in Nigeria that may be react, uh, result to some, uh, some form of uh, civil war. That's the fear now. Now, let's look at it now. Uh, this is about the seventh uh, con uh, country now on the continent of Africa that we are having a military coming into the political space in Africa. Now, uh, just like what you said, that uh, immediately uh, the commander took over of uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the leadership in, 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 in Niger. You had uh, some Nigerians going on the streets, uh, jubilating and all that. And we saw some Nigerians waving uh, the Russian flag. Now, mm -hmm. there are suspicions now that uh, the Wagner Force, uh, mm -hmm. which is a private uh, 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 military establishment of Russia, that the Wagner Force has hands. Just the way uh, there are suspicions, too, that the Wagner Force has hands in other uh, military junctures in, in Africa. Do you see what is happening in Niger, that the Wagner Force probably has hands in it? Um, let me, the, 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 the Wagner Force is a child of a very terrible, devilish child of necessity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you have to understand we are in we are in an anglophone country. We are in a country that was that was colonized by the British. Yeah, but the countries that were francophone are the ones that are having this present problem. So there is a symptomatic. There is a need to look at the symptomatic reasons behind all this. Why is why is, why are all these countries? Anglo uh, Francophone countries. Why are they the countries of the of the uh, French economic zone in West Africa? Yeah. Why are they the, the, the countries of Sef of, of, of Sefa? Why are they these countries? What is the problem that they are having with the French establishment? You know, and I watched one of them yesterday saying that when there is a problem in Africa and it does not affect it, it, it affects the French government. They take them out. But once it is, it, it, no matter how bad that government is, no matter how it is, they will say, oh, oh felicitations, congratulations. <laughs> that is what, there is a problem. So the problem in Niger is the problem in Burkina or Upper Volta, or Burkina Faso, is the problem in Guinea, is the problem in, in, in Mali, is the problem in Eta. All these are francophone countries. And these francophone countries, because of the nature of direct rule or egalité, fraternité, liberté that they did in the 60s that made every one of them see themselves as an extension of the French state. Mm -hmm. So if for uh, what is happening now, when I saw those Russian flags, those ones are just taking advantage of the, the void. There must be a need for us to look at the scale of engagement between African uh, former colonial uh, vassals of the French state. It is not happening in in Anglo 
foreign countries. It's not happening in Nigeria. Ghana has had its own before seven, eight, nine coups. Nigeria has had their own. Uh, Sudan has had 17 coups. But all these ones are beginning to fetter away. But there is a, a seeming uh, cry by, by the citizens in Francophone countries. Francophone West Africa in particular, not just even the whole Francophone Africa, just Francophone West Africa, to extricate themselves from a stranglehold by Paris or Paris. That is where the problem is. And so if you look at it, if you look at the developmental indices across all these countries, apart from maybe to a lesser extent, Ivory Coast, that is where the problem is. Even in Ivory Coast, I, Pedro, Pedro, myself, I was in Abidjan the day the fight broke out about 13 years ago between Lauren Babo and Alassana uh, 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 Ouattara. Now, the same Lassana Ouattara who had come in did two terms, 10 years. He has changed the constitution hmm. to allow him now to do a third term, 15 okay. years. So these are created, these are problems that are created by the political class, the insensitivity of the political class to the whims and caprice and the pains of the ordinary man on the street. So when the ordinary man on the street now sees a messiah, even if the messiah is the devil, as it is now in the Czech Republic, they run into the street to celebrate. So that is why I'm saying that there is a need, whether it is by the special forces of Mamadi Dombaya in, 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 in removing Afakonde, whether it is in the sources of the likes of Blaise Campore doing his own in Burkina Faso, whether it is that of um, uh, this um, uh, uh, Chua, uh, Chuame or whatever, Chuaman, yeah. Yeah. doing now his own in Niger, we must look at the root remote causes and not just this image. I think that the ECOWAS pronouncement was a failure in, in, in diplomacy. <laughs> this is very simple. You have sent it, uh, the son of Idris Dabi, the uh, president of Chad, to go and do a, a, a negotiation. The man is landing at the airport and uh, uh, Al Jazeera and the uh, other um, the BBC are showing us the pictures. At that same time, the echo was given ultimatum. To give an ultimatum. Yeah. In a country where <laughs> everybody seems to be on the side of those who took over. And I think that shows a very uncoordinated, hasty uh, uh, intervention. This thing just happened on Wednesday. So by now, by by political definition, mm. the coup has not succeeded yet because they said in, if you read the political definition of a coup d'état, the ones that have succeeded must have taken a minimum of seven days in office. So there is room to engage, and I hope to a large extent the ECOWAS, while trying to pull its own uh, weight because of the uh, 2022 established uh, uh, idea to establish a, a, a West, another West Africa. Um, intervention force. We okay. shouldn't use this as N Niger is too fast. Niger is almost a, a, a quarter bigger than the landmass of Nigeria. Which is a massive country. That is the third or fourth largest landmass country in, Af in Africa. In Africa. Yeah. So we have to be able to look at it. And who are going to be the collateral uh, 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 victims of this? The first will be Nigeria. Okay. We have the longest single navigatable and arable border with Niger. Okay. We Doctor, already have a problem with Niger anyway. Yeah. They, because the last government told us that half of the Muridas and headsmen that attacked us are from Niger. Okay, Doctor, and we're going to we come have, to that. Yes. Yeah, we'll come to that. Let, let's pause you. We, we just employ that you stay tuned there. Let's uh, pause uh, so that uh, we can also come to Nowita Igbotako, who is right here uh, in our studio. Now, Nowita Igbotako, back to the studio now. You had Dr. Don Pedro, you know, speaking via Zoom from uh, United Kingdom. Uh, the uh, West African organization, that's the ECOWAS Echo now, uh, has given an ultimatum. Now, now there was uh, a kind of uh, an em emissary that was sent to go and negotiate the peace and all that. And of course, uh, that emissary had hardly uh, landed. ECOWAS was giving uh, their ultimatum. Now, the fear now, because from the look of things in, 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 in Niger, those uh, cool plotters are not ready to relent. But the fear now is that another civil war uh, shouldn't break out. What's your take on all that? Well, uh, just as uh, 
my friend in, in UK has said that uh, so far, the, the leadership of ECOWAS, they have not uh, displayed, you know, statementship, so to say. How can you be sending an emissary to, to a place we call like a war zone, mm. a, a fragile, you know, a fragile situation. You are not threatening a military attack. Is that, what kind of diplomacy is that? Gumbo diplomacy and what? In conflict resolution, what do we call that? It is meaningless. You want to make peace, you are bringing a, a dagger. <laughs> so you say, you say you want to make peace and you, and you are threatening. So that shows the, the, the kind of leadership we have in the COAS. They are not, uh, you know, they are not strategic. Just as the doctor has said, the situation in Niger is a, is a complex situation. Niger is not a free country. Remember the role of France. France has been there as a major manipulator of things in Francophone countries. And as we speak, they have bases there. The Americans, they have bases in Niger. The, 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 the international colonialists, they are still operating in Niger. Just as he said, uh, Mami Bouzon uh, has not been a president. I said, I don't be fantastic. He said, he's, he has not even been a president. Oh. We agreed. You understand? But the problem we have now is that even the, the military junta that has come in, to me, they are not Messiah. I see, I see them as another group of persons that have come to taste power for his own sake. Because the problem we we'll have in Africa is a problem of visionary leaders. Visionary leaders. They need to take the people, take them from poverty, take them from uh, hunger, and things like that. We don't have them. You do, leaders just come to power and started playing their own game, parochial game. You know, surface threats. Mm. They are, they are surface lectures. That's what they pursue. Okay. So, so, for me, I think, uh, as, as you said, if, for instance, there's a full blown military operation mm. Mm. in Niger, mm. it, will, it will affect Nigeria. Okay, let, let, let's pause you. I'm going to pause yeah. you there so that uh, we can quickly take a short uh, break. And uh, when we return, we're going to be seeing some video footages. Uh, let's uh, show you how it actually happened in uh, Niger some few days ago. And of course, we also look at uh, the position of ECOWAS. We started by hinting you that uh, ECOWAS has given ultimatum that if uh, the military uh, coup commanders, if they don't uh, step down and uh, reimpose uh, the president in Niger, then they have uh, no other option but to bring in some military force into the situation. So we're going to be looking at all that and also looking at uh, the implication of all that. Please stay tuned. <music> All right, thank you so much. Uh, the program is still Africa Discuss on independent television. We are looking at uh, the coup in uh, Niger, uh, whereby a few days ago some military uh, men took over uh, power in uh, Niger. As we speak now, international analysts have said that the coup is more or less yet to succeed because uh, in international politics, not until a coup lasts for seven mm -hmm. days, of course, uh, you will not uh, recognize such a coup to have succeeded. So this is about, uh, this is about uh, the fifth day now, so we'll have about two more days. So if after on Wednesday uh, the coup uh, d'etat continues in Niger, then of course uh, the world is going to recognize that uh, uh, the coup commanders have actually taken charge of governance in uh, Niger. All right, so we still have Nowita Ibutako right here with us, and of course uh, Dr. Don Pedro Obaseki joining us via Zoom in UK. Now, Doctor, I I'm going to come back to you now. We are looking at ECOWAS now. Now, our own president, uh, President Bola Tinubu, is uh, the chairman of ECOWAS. So much is, uh, uh, you know, expected in uh, this uh, Niger, uh, uh, you know, coup. I mean, it actually puts our own president, uh, you know, his ability, uh, his chairmanship ability to oh. power now, his ability to resolve uh, issues as it relates to the block, that's the ECOWAS block and all that. Now, Dr. Pedro, let's look at all this along uh, the ultimatum that ECOWAS has given. Um, the ECOWAS ultimatum would have been nice if after an, an initial engagement, the coup plotters seem to be belligerent. So they played into the hands of a desperate group. Like my friend in the studio said, you know, uh, 
good in a military coup. Those people are just another set of brigands fighting to this power. But what ECOWAS have done is trying to play a gun boot diplomacy. Gun boot. Mm. You know, gun diplomacy doesn't work anymore. Doesn't work. You can look at it, you can, because as a student of history, look at the entire world. Nigeria has a very strong man, strong man of Africa. We have not been able to curtail Boko Haram in a small side of Nigeria for the last 10 years. That is a statement of fact. America did not succeed as they would have wanted to in whether in Syria, whether in Afghanistan, whether in Iraq. You don't fight a people who are bent on what they want to do, particularly as we see this. And when you look at it, it's as if ECOWAS was playing another person's script. Hmm. I'm being frank with you, they were playing a France, a France script. Yeah. <laughs> and that has become a... So what those people did now is to ask now, who are those that oppose France? They will say Russia. Now look at it again. The entire 95% of the uranium deposits in Niger are controlled by France, mm -hmm. not by Niger N Nigerians. That is the truth. Should, when I was going following one of them yesterday, he said, la verite, c'est la verite, c'est la verite. That is, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth. So we have to look at it from that. Ecowas must now, just as they did in Liberia, just as they did in Sierra Leone, and maybe to a lesser extent, like what happened with Buhari in, uh, against the, the, the Jamaa. Uh, Jama of, of, of Gambia, there must be an attempt to engage. engage. Because we have a status quo now, and the status quo is different from the previous status quo prior to, 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 to when is the last week when these boys took over. So it's going to be difficult to say return to status quo and take alone. It's going to be difficult. Now, what will now happen in a successful coup? where the president and all the instruments of office have been dismantled. It will be difficult. What will now happen to those who have taken over government? If you are telling them return the man or... The... No, it is much more than the man. The president is different from the man sitting on that seat. The presidency is different from who Mr. President is. Mm. So what I thought last night was that what ECOWAS have done, if you look at all the leaders of ECOWAS, all the ECOWAS presidents, they are all beneficiaries of either rogue elections or bad military incursions. All of them, including those in, in Benin, in, in, in Togo, in Chad, in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Guinea, all of them. So what you are seeing, when I was younger, there is a, 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 a James Harley Chase we used to read. There is one of them titled, Want to Stay Alive. <laughs> In that Want to Stay Alive, there is the character called Pokto Holo. Pokto Holo. And Pokto Holo said, and Pocto I quote, Adam Goodman, he said, fear is the key that unlocks the wallet of the rich. Wow. What ECOWAS leaders Pocto have Holo. done now is that they have taken an action premised on fear then they fear so they have not allowed the robustness of international diplomacy to take its course i believe that the coup in niger will not stand like in the other cases because there are reasons for taking over power are a lot more porous than the ones given in some of the recent military incursions so it is important because that area of West Africa, the Sahel, the areas between the Savannah and the, 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 the Sahara has become a volatile and massive uh, incub in, uh, uh, incubator of terrorism in, 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 on, the, on the subcontinent. Yeah, Dr. So Basaki, Dr. Yes. Basaki, if you say that uh, the coup in Niger may be a little bit different now, now, let's look at uh, Sudan. I mean, the coup plotters in Sudan uh, came in, given the same excuse, uh, poverty, uh, economic situations, and all that. Just like what uh, the coup plotters in Niger are also giving now. So, 
Uh, what, is, uh, what is the difference necessarily? What makes it different? Okay. Uh, let me tell you, first of all, Sudan is the country in West in Africa that has had the largest number of... They've had 17 coups and coups attempts mm -hmm. since 1960. Sudan. Sudan is the worst case of the <laughs> British and French and German imperialism in Africa. Sudan is almost like a, the ethnic setup of the old Sudan is almost like the ethnic setup of Nigeria. So Sudan is a lot different. First and foremost, the Sudanese a, a, a situation had two major uh, flanks with the people in the middle, the flank of the establishment trying to protect the, the, themselves, the flank of the militias that have been there in Darfur. Mm. It is the leader of the of the genocide in Darfur that has been on since 1974, even when John Garang, the leader of the SPLA, the, the Sudanese People's Liberation Army, was still alive. That was there. And then the people, the people took over power. But in taking over power, they did not have the capacity to retain power. Mm -hmm. And the military pride on that. But that is different from what is in Sudan. The Sudan now, and what is in Niger. In Niger, yeah. Why the Sudanese situation was a people-led uprising almost akin to the Arab, Arab uh, 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 the Spring uh, 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 Revolt of 2011. What happened here in Niger now is as if the military is leading the people to take over power. Why the other one, the people led the army to take over power. After taking over power, the people, the army pushed aside the people. And then the two contending forces, the militia of the rapid uh, uh, support support uh, uh, front mm. and the uh, army have what we, what we have today. But it's different in Niger. If you look at all the videos that have been coming, the videos have seemed to have, uh, yeah, if you, I don't know whether you understand yeah, uh, yeah. French in some of those videos. Me, yeah. They seem to be on the side of the people. Mm. So there is a need for ECOWAS to negotiate and engage strategically. So as to make these people not feel, oh, they want to attack us. They, they said in their last statement last night, they have closed their borders. So <laughs> anybody who enters those borders now is invading the country. Yeah. And once you are invading the country, it's going to be a different kettle of fish altogether. Okay. West yeah. Africa does not need that. If we do that, the first people that will suffer it are all the 10 or 9 border states from Boronu, Yobe, Bauchi, mm -hmm. uh, Jigawa, Kanu. Uh, uh, Kassina, uh, Zamfara, and uh, Sokoto, those are countries that, those are states in Nigeria Northern that states, are yeah. bordering yeah. Niger Republic. Mm. And Niamey, many people don't know, the two biggest cities in Niger Republic are less than a hundred kilometers from Nigeria. Okay, let me Niamey, stop you. Let which is just a drive away from Sokoto, yeah. and Maradi, which is just a drive away from Daura, mm. they were just, and there is no border. Okay. The border is... Only on paper. It is, right. is pause. All right, Doc. L let me pause you now. Back to you, uh, to the studio here at Nowita Ibotako. Now, uh, just like what Dr. Obaseki said, that uh, the ECOWAS leadership seems to be responding, uh, you know, for fear. Now, he also said that uh, uh, if you look at uh, those that constitute the ECOWAS membership now, the heads of membership of ECOWAS, they, they, they are somehow, uh, they have skeletons in their political cupboards and all that. Now, can we say that ECOWAS, this is their reaction now, their position now. Do they have uh, the locust in law? They call it the local standard. Local standard. But in the popular uh, public parlance now, they call it the moral justification to uh, be of this position, to be given a, 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 an ultimatum. No, which I would tackle. They don't. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. <laughs> it's just like I work, I work for those said that uh, it's like a kettle mm. cutting charcoal, a black petal, uh, uh, a kettle black. the pot black. Yeah, <laughs> they are not responsible leaders. They came in through fraudulent means. Do you want to talk about Nigeria? Yeah, but we cannot say. No, I, I mean some of these. Uh, cases, but is it is it truth now? Yeah, yeah. The voices of the people are being subverted. <laughs> All over Africa, all over uh, Sahel, everywhere. So, who do you want to say in Echo, uh, ECOWAS that uh, uh, the, the, the leadership in ECOWAS that came in through, uh, you know, uh, transparent democratic process or whatever? They are not sustained with the blood of the people. They are not for people. And yeah, just like uh, 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 my co-panelist said, 
They are playing the card for France. France is a major power. It's a major manipulator of that zone. They are feeding on the blood of the people. And it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, uh, for one reason or the other, reasonable leaders have not been able to find their way to power. People, people will, uh, a group of people will just come, come up and pretend they are on the side of the people. Just like what happened in Sudan. Before you know it, they are not they are playing, their, they are not playing their agenda. In Niger, the same problem. These guys I'm seeing in Niger, they cannot take the people to the next level. And they are, they are playing on the sentiment of the people. Those have been agreed in this program that Mohamed Bazan was no president when he was there. He's no longer president, so we call him an ex president. The decision cannot return him by the way I'm looking at it. So, in, as a conflict resolution expert, you don't bring out a dagger and you want to discuss peace. It's never done. You must exhaust diplomacy. Because there are a lot of factors on the ground, a lot of factors, a lot of interest in Niger. So, if you miscalculate, Niger will burn. If Niger burns, it will, it, it will, it will, it will swim the fire, the inferno, will descend on Nigeria, on northern Nigeria. We, we have not been able to, 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 to battle Boko Haram. That's what Prof said. Is it when Niger started boiling that we're going to control the inferno that will come from the Niami? Niami is just how many kilometers from Kano, from Kaduna, and those places. So if you ask me my honest opinion, my honest opinion is that ECOWAS leaders should be strategic. If you if, 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 if go on both, it will not serve the interests of, 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 of Nigerians. It will even affect Nigerians. So let's, it's, it's, it's a dicey, difficult situation. I think this call for leadership. I want to challenge the leadership of ECOWAS or ECOMOG or ECOWAS not to play to the hand of imperialists. Not to play to the hands of France. United States and the United they have bases in the, as we speak, they have bases in the J. In Africa. Too. In Africa. Yes. So what are we saying? Just the, the tragedy we have in Africa is that uh, business leaders have not been opportuned to step into corridors of power through manipulation of the highest level. Because if we, we, have, we, we, we have instances where people who would have wanted to take Africa out of, out of the gutter, I call it gutter, gutter of misgovernance, gutter of poverty, gutter of misappropriation of African resources. Mm. If you want to take Africa, gutter, they will take it out of the scene. This I remember uh, Sankara, Thomas Sankara. Thomas Sankara was one of the best leaders that came from uh, from uh, Burkina Faso. He came to a coup, but he had vision. He had fantastic blueprint. But, but we know what happened to uh, Sankara. Yeah. Sankara was removed. They used uh, Blas Campore and what have you. Mm. So it's for me, friend. if we want to take, if you don't want yourself to get worse, I advise the leadership of ECOWAS to, to tread softly, to exhaust diplomacy to the, to, to, to exhaust diplomacy to the highest level. Exhaust it so that we don't have another military situation in our corridor, okay, because it will spill over. We don't need it. Okay, now, Doctor Don of uh, Baseki, uh, Pedro Baseki. Now, uh, we we saw uh, we saw uh, the uh, Minister of Finance some video footage now whereby he cried, you know, and of course, as we speak now, uh, uh, Bazoom is being detained by the military junctures now. Now, what do you have to make? Because there are insinuations that um, uh, he may be asked to give accounts. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that now? <laughs> you see, when in political engineering, uh, people will seek to find legitimacy. And uh, that is what the military junta in Niger is trying to do now, find legitimacy. How do you find legitimacy? Power resides first to the people. So when you have a plethora of people, millions and millions of your people in dire poverty, so tell the finance man to come and give account because the country is poor, whether we like it or not, but it's rich in resources, which is not, repli which is not replicated in the lives of the people. 
So what you are saying is like it appears that the military junta have read the law or the art of strategy, the art of war, better than their echoers, uh, 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 leaders. That is what we are we see playing out. Don't forget, we must understand that Bazon is the first person to have been engaged and elected in a transfer of power since 19, since, since 1960 in, in Niger Republic. Oh, yeah, I said it when I started. In 1960. Yeah, just go on now. All right, I, I think... Yeah, I think... Uh, before he got into office, like the panelist said, a overthrow was a way to a lot to make it seem like um, we don't want these people. Now the man before him was fighting. The man before him, Muhammadu Isuf, who took who handed over power in 2001, mm. wanted to perpetrate himself in office, and he had to leave because of the fear of a military coup. So I, I personally believe that no attempted coup or coups are justified or justifiable. But they will continue to happen until the leadership of our people, or the leadership of the West African sub-region in particular, begin to follow the rules of engagement that got them into office in the first place. Hmm. Like there was, you saw another video from an, from one of the uh, um, uh, spokespersons of the Niger uh, 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 takeover, hmm. saying that none of the leaders have the moral right to tell them. Look at the map of Look at the map of West Africa. All those that have been taken over in terms of land mass is exactly 50% of the West African sub-region. They call them the G5 Sahel. The G5 Sahel is Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea. Senegal, and I think Mauritania. Okay, doctor. Now, all these places. Yeah, doctor, because of time now. Over, yeah, because of time, if after, if after, yeah, so that we see you now, if after maybe seven days now, today is the fifth day now, uh, two more days to go. So at uh, the completion of the two days, uh, the uh, coup comes to say, <laughs> what would we have to say now? Because by you, by, from what you said now, you said for you, it's not considered that the coup has come to stay because these are still counting. Going by uh, international politics, not until seven days, a coup uh, is not said to, to have succeeded. So at the, at the completion of the seven day, uh, if the coup well, stays. Well, once it's get the coup, yes, I mean, Hmm. All right, I think uh, we have in connection problem there. All right, so I know it's like just as uh, well, I just tried to ask. Uh, uh, Tomorrow in seven days, okay. The sitting government of that state holding on ECOWAS and the uh, uh, African Union to engage, and you can engage negatively or positive, so positive. If you ne engage negatively, you can suspend the jail, but to suspend them means you have agreed that they are the leadership there now. Hmm. You are suspended Mali. You are suspended uh, Guinea. You are suspended Burkina Faso. You are now suspending Niger. Which country can remain? <laughs> so there must Which be a, a new paradigm to rob these people, cajole them. Because war will not solve it. These people no, are there. No, let, let's, no, let me no, find. No, My friend just said now that America has military bases there. America has a military base. Uh, France has a military base. base. Italy and Germany. Germany yeah, even yeah. has a logistic support base yeah. in Niger. Yes. And in spite of this, these people presently go ahead and do this. Uh -huh. Last month or two months ago, Mali sent out the peacekeeping force. So there is no peace to keep. Mm -hmm. Mali sent the UN out of their country. Yeah. What is giving these people this mind? Because it appears the Japan people on the streets are on their side. Hmm. If the people on the streets are not on their, if the president of Nigeria today, uh, Mr. Bolatin, hmm. decides to say we will fight war today, will I be on his side? Hmm? <laughs> I'm not going to be inside. That's your opinion, though. Be, 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 <laughs> so no, I'm being frank. But if one. Everybody will hear because the leader has spoken. That is what we are saying. This Niger coup plotist have lashed in on the 
failure of civilian leadership in their yeah, country. Yeah, that's it. Mm. And it will be difficult to, 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 to remove. You okay. can, are you going to import a new president for them? Mm. All right. I'm dropping by parachute. Yeah, Dr. Obaseke, we want to say very big thank you. A very big thank you for finding time thank to join us sir. via Zoom. We appreciate you on the time. Thank you so much on the program. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, grateful. All right. Thank now. you. All right. So back to the studio here now, the Wittai Botako. Now, uh, just like what uh, Dr. Don Obaseke uh, said, uh, that uh, the people happy with military takeover, just as what we are saying in, in Niche. So, what does that pretend for our, our supposed democracy in Africa? It shows that the people have been disillusioned. Disillusioned. They're not happy with the civilian government. If there's a coup in Nigeria today, for instance, if there's a military coup in Nigeria, people will rush to the streets. Because Nigeria never bought fuel at the price we are buying fuel now. So before I decide to leave our cars at home, we will not decide the day we will, uh, how much where we want to go with our cars. Yeah. Because we have that you know, commitment, family commitment. Mm. Nigeria has never had it so bad the way we are. If somebody shoot a gun in anywhere, I want to talk about Nigeria government now, Nigeria will rush to the street. That will happen in, 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 in Niger. The military boys capitalize on the sentiment of the Nigerians. They saw that Mohamed Bozum has led them into a coup de sac. Yeah. Mohamed Bozum has led them into a pit. Mm. No social changes, nothing was happening. The, the man, Bozum, we don't have his phone, he's going to three years. And you say you are president of a country. What country is he presiding on? All right, though, which I would So oh, they are the situation. Yeah. Uh, they, are, they are international manipulators in Niger. Mm. But unfortunately, the carcass. Are the people okay? All right, so I, I think so that this will have to be responsible that. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. So, just like what we said, that uh, days are counting, mm. uh, this counting for ECOWAS uh, because ECOWAS gave their ultimatum, and of course, uh, for international political experts, these are also counting because uh, not until the coup yeah, um, have days. succeeded for seven days, then uh, it will not be assumed that uh, there is actually a military junta taking over. Uh, the government in uh, Niger. So we'll just end the program here today. Let's see how it goes. In another few days' time, we'll see the latest updates on the Nigerian coup. My name is Evan Zunofuge. Very big thank you for watching uh, the program today.